part two of Growing Strawberries, y'all. Here it is. we talked about where we got these plants, what kinds they are, and how I got them potted up. But because apparently I value your time more than I value my own, I've spent a stupid amount of time making a part two so that you don't have to make all these same mistakes. I've got a lot of information coming at you really fast because we're all on this journey together. And I'm just sharing with you not only my successes, but all my fails. We all wish it was as simple as popping it out of a cup and putting it into the soil, but if you're watching this video, you know it's not that simple. First thing we have to do is choose our site location for where we're gonna put our strawberry patch. I chose this long stretch in front of my house because it only gets a couple hours of sun. In my experience, strawberries cannot handle the heat of our summers here in Texas, especially with droughts lasting two to three months and temperatures in the hundreds almost every day. This location also has a water spigot right on the house. This will allow me to run a drip line directly through my bed. We started by putting in a border and then tilling up the soil. But as you can see by my beautiful lawn right next to it, this soil has no life, it's completely dead, and it's all clay. Strawberries definitely won't survive in this, so how do we fix it? After spending countless hours doing research on the internet, watching videos, and taking a lot of notes, I realized there's just a lot of contradicting information out there. Except, I kept coming across this soil concoction. Strawberries like a pH of between 5.3 and 6.5. I have had my soil tested in the past and it's always over a seven. One of the fastest ways I read to drop your soil pH is to use Canadian sphagnum peat moss. I get these bricks at my local garden center and they have a pH around a four. The next thing that I add in is garden compost. I ran out of my homemade compost in my vegetable gardens in the beginning of the spring, but this'll do just as well. I also add in composted cattle manure and composted chicken manure. I am not gonna end up using all of this in my strawberry patch. I'm also planting blueberries. So let me know in the comments if you would like to see a video about that too. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it. Once I have this pretty thoroughly mixed up, I start just dumping it into my garden bed. Then my plan is to till it in. Though this mixture is recommended by a lot of gardeners, I noticed that a lot of the material was just blowing away and it wasn't a windy day. So I had a feeling that this soil was really hydrophobic. Hydro meaning water and phobic meaning it doesn't like it. That would make this a recipe for disaster for my strawberry patch. I did go ahead and put it all throughout my bed, but kept in mind why I started making these videos in the first place. A lot of things that work well in other zones don't necessarily work here. Like planting strawberries in eight plus hours of full sun. Because here in Texas, they burn to a crisp. That's why I cannot figure out how California and Florida are the top producers for strawberries in the United States. If I didn't know any better, I'd say we all have our own sun. And God hates Texas. Anyways, back to our strawberry patch and current soil situation. We gave it a really good tilling in, but I did not feel comfortable with the texture of the soil. Trying to give it the benefit of the doubt, I went through and I soaked it to see if it held any water at all. Because I've made the mistake in the past where I planted directly into hydrophobic soil, and it was catastrophic. Just as I thought, the top looks like pudding, but it's still completely dry. And this is after the water sitting in there for over an hour. The soil didn't hold any of the water. In fact, it all just ran off and flooded my yard. Cool, cool, cool. Trying not to feel too discouraged, I did some more research because that recipe was obviously not gonna work. I found another gardener in my area that had the same problem and fixed it by adding more compost and sand. But you obviously don't have to do it on this scale. We needed sand for our chicken coop as well as some other places in the property, so we went and got a truckload. Finding a good landscape wholesaler in your area is probably one of the best tips that I have for gardening. Because as many bags of sand as I would have needed to do any of these projects, it would have cost a fortune. But this truckload was only $35. You just have to be willing to put in the work. Day two, but more determined than ever to have my strawberry patch. 
I'm gonna do what I like to call a bucket test, which is just a quick test to figure out how much I need of each component to get the soil texture that I want. And I'm just eyeballing what I would consider like a square foot being. Starting with our original mixture, adding in some sand, as well as some more of that garden compost and give that a good mixing in and repeat that process until you find the soil texture that you want. What I'm looking for is to be able to press it into a ball and it holds its form but crumbles easily with a little pressure. This is not only going to help with water retention but also drainage. This is starting to feel really good to me and I am so happy that this worked. I just hope that this helps save you a lot of time and frustration. We ended up removing about half of the original soil mixture that we put in there and dumped several bags of compost as well as lots of that sand and then tilled it all in again. We avoided the spot that's just left to the hose spigot because that's where our drain access is. So I'm just gonna use some of these pavers that I had laying around to cover that area but still make it easily accessible for us. The end all mixture ended up being about a third of the original mixture, a third of sand and a third more compost. But it's finally holding moisture, so it's time to plant. I did not think this process was gonna take this long and I did not water these poor sweet babies in the two days that we were building this bed. So they're gonna need a really deep soak. Square foot gardening says that you can plant four per square foot. So I'm eyeballing them about six inches apart because I have a ton of berries to plant and not a whole lot of space. We need to be very careful when we're planting that we don't bury that crown and that we're only planting it to the depth of the soil level that it already has. I'll spare you even the sped up version of the amount of time it took me to plant all of these because after the first video and how well that worked out for me, I ordered twice as many. These strawberries are super dry, so I'm gonna give them a really good watering down but this is all I was able to get done on day two. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no, no! Yep, me and the stairs had a disagreement and I lost that battle. I was severely hurt and could not walk for several weeks nor tend to my strawberry patch because I couldn't even bend for about three months. I do have some casualties, but to my surprise, most of them are still alive. I'm feeling pretty good today and I'm able to squat down. So I'm gonna go through and clean as many of these up as I can and see how much of my patch is actually salvageable. I'm just trimming off any leaves that are severely burned or damaged. But I'm finding that my strawberries were actually quite busy while I was down. All those plants that are right up against the house, I didn't plant those. My strawberries are sending runners off everywhere which normally if you plant in as dense as a situation as I did, you would wanna cut these off. But I'm gonna use these to my advantage. See, strawberries are better about propagating themselves through runners than they are from setting seed. Where they send off these long shoots and it creates a whole new plant with its own root system. This little dude obviously can't root on cement, so it's still getting all of its nutrients from its mom plant. But it sent off another runner off of that runner that is rooted. And then that sent off another one that's also rooted and it just keeps on going. So just this one runner alone gave me four new plants with a fifth one coming in. And this is going on all throughout my patch. So I can take any of these rooted babies and plant them anywhere I want. And I do have some plants that might not make it and then others that are definitely dead. So I'll use my little strawberry runners to replace them. I'm gonna start by taking these guys that are right up against the house. I'm just going to gingerly pull them up to save as much of that root system as I can. I've noticed that strawberries don't suffer a lot from transplant shock. So doing this will be probably okay. I'm just gonna cut them away from the mommy plant because it's definitely big enough to handle its own. It's already got quite the root system on it. All we have to do is stick it over dig a little hole and pop them right in. I like to use the part of the runner that's quite stiff to kind of hold it in place while I cover up his root system. Just helps so I don't bury that crown. These strawberry babies are not gonna produce me any strawberries on their first year, but they should in their second and years thereafter. 
Strawberries are only supposed to have a lifespan of about three or four years. At least that's how long they're supposed to produce berries. So if you want strawberries year after year, you can replant secondary crops, or you can sacrifice some berries and let them produce runners to make you as many plants as you want, as this takes a lot of energy away from the mommy plant. Which is why none of these have berries or flowers. However, since this is our current situation, when life gives you lemons, make strawberry lemonade. I am not a wasteful person, so I will find a place to put them. And I feel a part three coming on. But for now, I'm just gonna take a cup of soil and use a bobby pin and pin that runner right into the soil and give him some kind of chance of survival. And after putting some of those rooted runners into all the empty spaces where my other strawberries died, I'm finally ready to mulch. Better late than never. This should have obviously been done after the original planting, but life happens. Out of the 45 or 50 plants that I planted in the first place, I only ended up losing four of them. But through the runners, I have like 30 new plants. I truly feel like their survival had everything to do with the soil mixture that we put in there, my darling husband that came out and watered when I couldn't, and them not getting blasted by the Texas sun all day long. They're mostly in shade, but the sun is just starting to creep over. But it only lasts about two hours before our big trees shaded all over again. I'm using pine mulch because from what I read, it's supposed to help maintain the acidity in the soil. Again, there was a lot of contradicting information about that. So how true it is, I really don't know, but I figure it can't hurt. So I'm putting it a good inch or so thick around each plant. I do see a lot of gardeners use straw for mulching around their strawberries. But in my experience, unless you buy seed-free straw, you're gonna end up with a ton of grass growing all through your beds. And the seed-free straw can be very expensive and hard to find. So as always, I'm just gonna use what I have on hand and I had a bunch of this pine mulch left over from doing the blueberries. While I was mulching, I realized something really huge that I feel like really helps support my theory that strawberries don't like the sun as much as people say that they do especially not in Texas. Call me crazy, I'm prepared, but check this out. These are the original plants that I put in. And once the sun hits this bed, the ones on the edge get the most sun, and then it gradually creeps backwards. Not only do the ones on the edge not look as healthy as the ones that are further back, but the one thing that we all know about plants is if they need it, they're gonna try and grow towards the sun. So how come my strawberries are all sending the runners backwards, away from the sun, back towards the house where it gets the most shade. Not one single strawberry plant sent runners out towards the sun. Since I went with ever-bearing strawberries, I should be able to get at least one more fruit set by the end of the season from my mature plants. So let's go ahead and fertilize these babies. One thing I learned a long time ago is stop paying attention to the picture that's on the package as much as the NPK number. You're gonna find this number on pretty much every single fertilizer that's worth its weight in the garden. To put as quickly as I can, the first number is nitrogen and that helps with foliage growth, helps the plant grow more leaves. The second number is phosphorus and that helps the plant set blooms. The third number is potassium and that not only helps the plant bloom, but it aids in the fruit development as well. There is a whole bunch of other really good stuff in here that helps the plant do different things, but those are the top three that you're gonna find on pretty much any fertilizer. If you take, for instance, Espoma's Holly Tone and Espoma's Berry Tone, their ingredients are exactly the same. And that's why I don't stress about the picture on the package. It's all about what you need that fertilizer to do to the plant. I do love all of the Espoma products because it's guaranteed not to burn your plants. They all have pretty light NPK numbers. So I don't need 10 different products to get all of my different fruit to do the exact same thing. This is after one week and my plants are doing exactly what I wanted them to do. And that's give me my long awaited strawberries that I have poured my blood, sweat and tears into. I know next season will be better, but I'm still taking this as a win. Thank you guys so much for staying with me on this journey. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I taught you something. And don't forget to grow big and go homestead.